Okay, let's talk about intake and fuel atomization and the surface of the intake track. What happens in a car, if you ever watch a, a video showing the, uh, the fuel come up, you see the fuel doesn't just go straight this way. It goes up at an angle. Why? Because there's greater vacuum and greater velocity in the center of the intake track here. <clears throat> what you have is a laminar flow due to the, um, the, the stiction between the air and the surface of the intake track. The smoother that surface, the more uh, moving air molecules are in contact with that surface, and so the, the more friction there is. I guess uh, skin friction is one, one word you can use in, that, in this situation. So laminar flow just means that there's sheets of, of uh, air and um, they all have friction amongst each other and the result of that being that the center flow is going to be faster than the outer flow. So what happens um, when, the, when the fuel comes up, it's relatively large droplets, okay? and the air is shooting past it. The air is going faster than the fuel droplets. From, from here to here, the fuel is accelerating. It's being accelerated by the air. But meanwhile, the air is shearing off the little, little specks of, of fuel from the fuel droplets. And that's what we generally call atomization. So what happens, um, on the, the surface of the, um, the metal here, where the air is flowing over it, if it is rough, it causes little microcurrents of airflow that acts like little ball bearings. And it helps the, 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 the speed of the air going over the surface. We used to think that the smoother it would be, the faster it would be. But that's not what happens. It's actually the opposite. So the rougher that surface, the, the better. So if this is the, the metal of the intake track, <clears throat> and then this is the, the air space inside of it. Um, you could look at it as being uh, concentric zones, okay, of airflow. And so we have them numbered here from one to seven. On these uh, charts here, we also have a one to seven. And this chart shows the air velocity from high to low which is from the center to the surface where the air is touching the intake track. And this is the, uh, the, the volume that each zone is, is handling. On this 38 millimeter carb, you can see that the, the greatest volume is right there in the middle, right here. <coughs> But on these smaller carbs, you can see it's, that's not quite the case. And how do I know this? Because I made a Excel program that uses the idea of laminar flow um, to, to create um, a, a graduation of air velocity from zone 7 to the center, okay? You see it's not exactly a straight line, and that's what works out best. And uh, these calculations here are able to tell me, uh, according to the intake volume of the, uh, of the engine, by the RPM, the engine size, 
what the, the peak velocity is and the uh, minor velocity is. And like I said, the, the, the volume that each zone is handling. So this section out here gives us the blue graphs. Okay. Now I've had to, I'm having to just take educated guess on the difference between the uh, the velocity on the outer zone and the inner zone. And right here is is a fraction. This is the uh, flow ratio of the outer zone. It's it's 19 percent of the inner. And that's, like I said, that's just an educated guess. This, this spreadsheet I'm making available on my website free for anyone to use. So you can put any number you want to here. And then the red graph is, is after you rough up the surface and you get more velocity in, in zone 7, which is represented by a higher percentage of the, of the uh, center zone. So in this case, we're going from 19% to 39%. And this program gives you a suggested value right here, which you have to enter right here. Suggested value right here, which you have to enter right here. <clears throat> of course, you can experiment with other, with other values. I'm going to put 50%, and you can see how the graphs change. So, um, look at look at the thirty-eight millimeter card. Given the educated guesses, I know, I know, I know, they're just guesses. But this gives you an idea. If the guesses are close to reality, this is very telling. Okay. If you rough up the surface of a large carburetor intake track. You can increase that um, velocity on the outer zone significantly, which means that you get this red graph right here, you get higher outer zone velocity and lower inner zone velocity. The inner lowers because you're still intaking the same amount of volume. That small amount of resistance on the outer zone is not going to affect the volume going into the engine. I'm sorry, this is not. So you see the you see the greatest change here with the biggest carburetor. Okay. Uh, but uh, on all of these carburetors, this is interesting. The um, the variation from the outer to the inner zone, the variation in air velocity which, as you already now know, the air velocity affects the atomization. The variation becomes less. Before, you had a bigger difference from outer to inner. Now you have less of a difference from outer to inner. How is that going to affect power? I have no idea. I wish someone would uh, do some tests with the rough surface, with smooth surface on a diamond. Very, very interesting what would the results be. So just theoretically speaking, this is the, the change you're going to see. You see less variation in air velocity. So um, would I recommend it? Yeah, yeah, I think it would be uh, at least uh, Interesting to find out what uh, what difference it makes on your bike. If you do that, and you think you notice a difference, this, is it faster? Is it slower? More power? Less power? Please uh, do comment here on, for this video, and so that others can see what your results are. So uh, this video. It's just, uh, just the start. Okay, thanks for watching.